live in the studio this morning with Judith K. Busby and the old guy. I have uh, our guest this morning on Viewpoint, uh, Miss Jill Wallace from uh, Sugar Grove uh, Nature Run. Just up about how many miles? About five or six, maybe? Oh, something like that. Something like right up here at Funks Grove. By the way, uh, you know what he called in and asked, inquired of, of Jill about uh, weddings up there? I can only say that I've been up there to weddings and the other side of the spectrum, too, uh, death. But uh, that's a beautiful place. If uh, somebody in your family, uh, to the lady who called, is thinking about that, boy, that's a great spot up there. And you, it's uh, just have to pick the right day as far as the weather's concerned. But that'd be a, a great spot for your family to whoever called. Jill, uh, we're talking about migrations of uh, God's creatures. Uh, when you stop to think about it, uh, that's a long, long way for those little creatures to fly. It's a very long way, yes. Uh, now, what about the intermediate stops? What do we know about their, uh, on their migration pattern? Oh, well, um, you know, there are lots of theories on how they know where to go, um, mm -hmm. but somehow they just do, and, mm -hmm. and um, yep, they... Yeah, but you know what makes it even more puzzling is that they're born and die along the way. How do, they, how do these mm -hmm. new guys on the block know where to pick up and what direction to That's go? That's a very fine question. That's, That's a called very Mother fine Nature's question. Intuitive. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It's um, amazing. It, it totally. is amazing. Yes, it's very You know, amazing. we all know about the migration of, of the bigger birds, and particularly the duck migration, the geese migration. We don't think too many. Well, we do because it's phenomenon, but those are bigger creatures. Now we're talking about the little tiny, God's tiniest little creatures here <laughs> doing this migratory business. And uh, it must be very difficult for scientists to study that because these are such little folks. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes, the monarch butterflies are, um, yeah, they are quite amazing. And so you know, the, the weather has hit them hard. Um, just not having places along the way to, you know, stop and get food and rest um, is a problem. So between those things, the, the numbers are definitely going down. Mm -hmm. uh, now, wh when the hummingbirds are going south, yes, uh, or when they're just hanging around here in the summer, yeah. <laughs> uh, and so many people have hummingbird feeders, is oh, it, yeah. isn't it a four to one ratio, four parts water to one part sugar? sugar? Yes. And my mom always used to put red food coloring in that. Well, the thing is that they are attracted to the color red. Nowadays, most of the hummingbird feeders themselves are red. Yeah. And you don't really want to put food coloring in just because we don't really know how those dyes might affect the birds. Uh, you know, it ha hasn't been tested on birds. <laughs> so be better off hard. just to just to leave it sugar water. And, and you don't have to boil it, do you? Do, can't well, you just mix it really hard? Well, you, you, the hot water will make the sugar um, dissolve faster. Uh -huh. So, so yeah, we usually use hot water, and but then we just store it in the refrigerator. We make up a, a big pitcher of it, and and you know it keeps for it keeps for several days. Uh -huh. and, Yep. What does the Center for Disease Control think about all this? They say don't eat red dye number 12 or whatever <laughs> it was. <laughs> I don't know. Well, you know, it's kind of off the radar, uh, our subject matter this morning. It, you know, it's hardly something you talk about every morning for breakfast no. or at the evening dinner table. I wonder if there, by the way, I wonder if there is an evening dinner table anymore uh, in today's society. Not be, so much, no. Be pretty no. rare, I'm afraid. A little fast food in a sack. Um, yeah. Now, in in October, yes, you have your autumn celebration. Yes, and that involves myriad things, right? Oh, it yes, it's it's a great day. Um, it's this year. It's October nineteenth. It's from ten a.m. until five p.m. Um, there is a three dollar admission charge, and it's just it's just a really fun day. Um, we have uh, pumpkin bowling, we've got live music, we've got pumpkin decorating, there's food, there are games, there are hikes, all kinds of things. Um, we have our blacksmiths come out and work. We have a blacksmith forge on site 
and they'll come out and work. We've got um, historical reenactors, buckskinners, um, wood turners, just uh, so many different things. Now you mentioned that there's a three dollar charge uh, for the whole day. Yes. But how other than this three dollars for the people who come on the 19th of October, you've got to I'm sure pay the bills the rest of the year too. <laughs> How do you do manage that? We are a private nonprofit, so we rely completely on donations, on memberships, on grants, on program fees. Um, so it's really we don't get any tax dollars at all. It's it's all just just money that we're able to bring in. Well, that source that you have is maybe more dependable than the source that you don't have anyway. <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> Amen for that. Yeah. So, so, we ha excuse me, honey. Go no, ahead. Please. You do it. I, I keep talking all the time. <laughs> no, I just want to ask you. <laughs> I get so sick of talking. I think it's great. I, I just sit here and enjoy the morning. Let it go by. Um, <laughs> we have an observatory up there, Jill. Yes, would we you, do. Would you speak to that, please? Absolutely. Um, we have a group there, the Twin City Amateur Astronomers. They're a great group of people and so they have actually right now they've got two observatories um, the first one the original one uh, it looks like a silo when you come out and you mm -hmm. see the thing thing that looks like a silo it's actually an observatory has a telescope at the top um, and then the top of the silo opens so they can see the skies and they just recently um, received a grant to build a new observatory and oh, this neat. one is it's right next to the other one and it's so it's so fascinating because the roof is on rails it's a small one-story building it looks just a little bit like a garage except the roof just rolls right off of it and so at night when they come out to uh, look at the stars they just roll off the roof and um, and there you go. They actually they have public observing um, days where the uh, the uh, public is invited to come out and have a program and learn about the stars and then look through their telescopes. They also have um, computer or computer monitors that are hooked up to their telescopes so you know they can just program in coordinates and just look straight up there um, i'm going to look real quick to see they actually only have one public viewing day left this year i'm going to find that real quick for you here and it's, while you're looking for that these are oh, just yeah. these are just amateurs that have this interest in astronomy yeah, I mean, and, and the title amateur is so misleading yes. because these these people, I mean, they're so fascinating and they they're love, scientists. yeah, they love to talk about what they do and they love to show people the stars and, and the planets and the moons and everything else in the sky. They really, they really are a wonderful group of people and, and they love to share their knowledge. And yeah, so the last public viewing session of the year is going to be on Saturday, October 5th from 7 to 9. And um, if it's cloudy, they'll still run the program that they had set. If it's raining, then the event would be canceled. Uh -huh. but, um, but otherwise, I mean, they'll they'll do it for one person, they'll do it for 50 people. Um, and they usually have a good group out there, and you get to see their brand new observatory too. Yeah, so it is built, up and it running? It is built, yes, it's up and running. You know, that's kind of interesting, Jim, Judy. Some people collect beer cans or cigar bands <laughs> for hobbies. <laughs> now, here's, here's something pretty meaningful yeah, as, really. a, as a hobby. Yeah. And these are all people who are probably scientists uh, by, by virtue of occupation anyway, or close there too anyway. Well, not they necessarily. Have, They're all all walks of life. Vocation really. and avocation. Yeah. Oh yes, absolutely. Well, it's an interesting thing to see those. Now, I've been up there, uh, uh, went up to one of those public days, and there put the old fellow behind that looked up there. Well, I didn't see it that well because of my eyes anyway. But uh, very, very interesting. And they're very patient. Oh yes, they're yes. very patient with you. And oh, they'll work with they, the little kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they. So that's um, a very interesting thing. Yeah. 
sometimes on the news they'll they'll have an announcement of be sure to watch in the western sky or the eastern sky whatever the case may be because there's going to be this meteor or what have you right and now does that bring the the club up there then right away so that they're all set oh oftentimes i mean they'll they'll come up on many other days um you know besides just their public viewing days they'll they'll in fact you know we we call them we call them our night shift yeah, really? which, <laughs> uh -huh. you yeah. know if it's if it's a clear night you can pretty well expect that that at least one or two of them will be up and and uh -huh. looking at the stars they've actually also been doing a lot of um photography um, photographing mm -hmm. different um, different things in the sky so yeah yeah so um, if it's a clear night generally somebody will will be out there at night yes and they can come just one at a time they don't have to wait for the club to set a date correct <laughs> correct okay but they do announce what days are for the public oh absolutely right absolutely yes good well that would be an interesting thing I had a friend who was uh, really into astronomy and uh, it was so interesting on you know, you know it, it is a night job high noon the stargazing is just <laughs> not good and at night she'd point out the constellations and you've got to have somebody who knows what they're talking about to point these things out because orion's belt didn't look like any belt to me <laughs> but they can they can make it live for you can't oh, they oh absolutely they truly absolutely can. oh that's so great you know you we've we really have quite a little gym up here at Sugar Grove, and we've kind of just touched a couple, two or three things. Would you kind of recount for us the, the, an overall view of all the things you do up there? There's, oh, there's a absolutely. Lot, there's a lot going on up yeah. there. Yeah, oh, yeah, there's always, always something going on. Um, of course, now we're getting into the fall, and so we've got beautiful fall colors. People come from all over to, to see the colors. Um, we have our nature center, which has um, a lot of hands-on and tactile um, exhibits for kids. We've got puppets and a, a indoor, a little camping tent where they can, you know, pretend to be camping. We've got a touch table, things they can pick up and touch, lots of items from nature. We have um, a small collection of live animals. We've got snakes and turtles and toads and frogs and we also have a beautiful bird viewing room yes yes and it's just a nice comfy room it's got a couch uh one-way glass and it looks over our bird garden where there are a lot of bird feeders with different kind of feeds so all kinds of birds come down and um you can just sit and watch them and relax we also have over seven miles of trails we have um, a color-coded trail system, so you can pick up a trail map and look it over, decide maybe how far you want to go. There are descriptions about what the different trails go through. You can decide where you'd like to go, and it's all color-coded so you won't get lost. We've got Imagination Grove, which is our nature play area for kids, and there we've got a, a climbing tree, a lookout tower, a teepee that was made by some fabulous Girl Scouts. We've got um, a zip line that's kid-sized, a clubhouse, uh, a creek that when it has water, which it does not right now, not unfortunately, so <laughs> the kids are more than welcome to get into the creek, turn over rocks, look for crayfish, look for fish, look for tadpoles. So uh, just, just a lot of really, really fun things to do. Do you have a lot of, uh, for instance, in the spring when school is over, uh -huh. do you have a lot of people coming for their annual uh, last day of school trip? Oh, absolutely. And we also, I, we, we have field trips all year long. We are open year round. Uh, we do have shortened hours in the winter time, but we're open year round and we do field trips all year. You know, this is mm -hmm. uh, getting into a, a decent sized um, field trip season as, as is spring, as is April and May. Uh, we do also do um, maple syrup field trips, and they tie in with our whole maple syrup experience. Which is, 
we did uh, a year ago, I think. Mm -hmm. And it cool. it was very interesting. Oh yes, yes, it's yeah. a it's a lot of fun. Um, every year, it's it's from roughly mid February to mid March. That is the season where you can tap the trees to get the sap to make the syrup. That's yeah. the only time. And that's that's a whole thing. It has lots of rules, not made by legislatures, but made by Mother Nature. <laughs> that's yeah. correct. That's yeah. absolutely well, there's correct. Well, all right. <laughs> um, you know, we talked about uh, all we have to offer up here, mm -hmm. but uh, many people have no cognizance at all, no idea of where we're located. So perhaps it would be well if we would just uh, tell folks. Uh, exactly how to get to Sugar Grove. Oh, sure. We are located off Old Route 66 between Shirley and McLean. Uh, you would just take Funks Grove Road. We have signs, the brown um, highway signs, on Old Route 66 for Sugar Grove Nature Center. So you just follow them, turn um, west at Funks Grove Road, and then take the next left and you just follow that road around and kind of there's a back there in the corner you yep have to, you yep have to it actually it. people get confused because there's a dead end sign i say we are the dead end you just <laughs> follow it to the dead end there we are it's Maybe not a dead end in, that sign. no dead end in nature certainly <laughs> but uh, it's well to, to be advised that, that uh, not to be fooled that you keep on going on that dead end right road. correct correct now jill is environmental educator you probably focus more on some areas of the nature center than others would that be a fair assessment yeah yeah it what, would be what really would would your job particularly encompass well i work a lot with the kids but we do we have programs from very very young from age three all the way up to um you know adult we have adult programs that um, are very interesting encompassing all different kinds of topics um, I have a program called Little Wonders, which is for three to five-year-olds with an adult chaperone. So, you know, a parent, a grandparent, an aunt, you know, an uncle will bring their uh, three to five-year-olds out. It's once a month. Um, it's usually on the third Wednesday of the month, and we cover all kinds of topics. We actually, we have one coming up next week. Um, I don't know what the date is. It's Wednesday of next, Wednesday of uh, next week. Okay, that's the 18th. Okay, yes, yes. And um, 10.30 to 11.30, and there's another one from 1 to, or 10 to 11.30, and then 1 to 2.30. It's going to be our little campers. We set up a little camp inside, and we turn out the lights and pretend it's nighttime, so you get a whole day and night of camping in an hour and a half. <laughs> and and yeah, it's, it's a fast it's, life. It's, yeah, <laughs> it's just a, it's just a blast with the little ones. Oh, they're sure. yeah, they're so much fun, and and so we have all kinds of topics. the The program runs throughout the year. It's a lot of fun. How about volunteers? Oh, you have to have volunteers. Up yes, we and, and absolutely, absolutely. We love our volunteers. Some have to be trained. Or, well, all of us would, who would be volunteered would have to be trained, of course, in whatever we're going to help with. Oh, right. Uh, can you use more volunteers? We can always use more volunteers. And, and there are so many different things that need to be done that it really can be um, adjusted to whatever a person's particular interests are um, and schedule and probably. schedule mm -hmm. exactly uh, we only have three full-time staff and for everything mm. else we rely on volunteers so we have volunteers that staff the nature center especially on on weekends we have um, volunteers that help maintain our trails and our grounds we have volunteers that basically help clean the nature center that do maintenance on you know things that need need being done so just a really really wide range of, of volunteer opportunities a lot more productive than sitting around playing canasta <laughs> well yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah it puts that that's a, it's a place to put something on the bar beside your elbow isn't mm -hmm. it well, yes it is there are so many volunteer opportunities i just blows my mind when anybody of any age says well there's nothing to do <laughs> get real do we, have a web do we have a website we do it is sugargrovenaturecenter.org 
Sure, and maybe your phone number you ought to mention, too, in case somebody's looking for a volunteer well, opportunity. Absolutely. Or looking for information on a program or just anything else at the Nature Center, you can always call us at 309-874-2174. Okay. Let's repeat that again because somebody might want to grab sure. a pencil. All right. Grab a pencil. <laughs> now grab a piece of paper. Or a pen. <laughs> yeah. So the website is Sugar Grove Nature Center. Dot org o r g and our phone number is three zero nine eight seven four two one seven four. Excellent, Joe Wallace. We appreciate your time this well, morning. Well, thank you uh, so much for having calling me. Calling your attention to our community, and we have a, a fair number of listeners out there who, who, who talk to Judith and I once in a while, and they also enjoy the program. We appreciate that. Uh, bring me somebody that. This right in our own backyard, particularly uh, really in our own backyard this morning, a few miles north of us here. Uh, so we appreciate your taking your time. You know, we always try to close with a quote or some comment about the subject matter of the morning. And all of us know about nature's catastrophes and so forth. But I read that here recently, we don't have to worry about what uh, nature is going to do to man. What we need to be concerned about is what man's going to do to nature. Oh, very good. Yeah. Thank you very much, Joe Wallace. Thank you, you so much for having me. I appreciate it.